This is Dr. Tom Rosell. After 38 years of practice and almost a million patient visits, the Rosell Center for Healing knows what works and knows how you can take control of your health and wellness. My team of doctors practice 21st century integrative medicine. Whether you suffer from chronic pain and fatigue, allergies or headaches, we can help. Take charge of your health before it's too late. Make an appointment today. Call 703-698-7117 or visit online at rosellcare.com. The information provided on Dr. Tom Rosell Live by Dr. Tom Rosell DC, interview guests, show co-hosts, or substitute hosts is not intended or implied to be a substitute for professional medical advice, diagnosis, or treatment. It is for general information purposes only. Information from this broadcast should not replace the appropriate consultation and examination process by a licensed physician. Always consult your own physician prior to changing any current medical directive or prescription. Dr. Tom Rosell Live, right now on 105.9 FM and AM 630 WMAL. Welcome to Dr. Tom Rosell Live. This is Dr. Tom Rosell indeed. I am live in studio waiting to take your phone calls on any aspect of natural integrative therapeutics that you may have a question about and you've got a problem and you've been looking to find out what you can do about it. You've tried, you've put all kinds of things together and guess what, you failed, right? Well, here's an opportunity. Let's do it together. Call me, 888-630-9625. 888 Love to talk to you on any subject that you have in mind. You know, if you've thought about it for a while, you know, you think about how do I get better? How do I get well? How do I stay well? How do I live a better life? I was sitting in the office the other day with uh, staff members, and every Thursday we have a full staffing. It lasts about 90 minutes, uh, plus or minus, and I told everybody to turn around and look at this big placard that we have on the wall in our conference room. And this thing is probably about three foot long or so and a couple feet long or wide. And it says what our purpose is. And it's to serve, educate, and empower others, you, to try to take your health from where it is and step it up a notch or three. And that's why we do the program. So I want you to take an opportunity and pay attention to What you can do, ask the question, what can I do to help myself? What can I do to empower myself to make my life better than I ever thought it could possibly be? See, that's why we do Dr. Tom Rizal Live. That's why we set up the website. You can go to RizalCare.com and you look around and there's videos there and there's all kinds of educational things. And you don't even have to reach out to us. But if you want to, you can do that as well. You know, you just go to the website, leave us a note and ask, you know, one of our doctors to call you back or you can go back and forth on email. We've set up beautifully to make that happen. Um, Why am I taking the time to do that and tell you about all of this information today? Simply because of the fact that recently I sat there and I had a couple people ask me, so what do you do to help people and educate them? And I'm saying, really, really? I mean, are you listening to the program? Do you go to our in-house continuing education programs? Do you, you know, and so I just want you to know that we have tremendous amount of educational information available for you so you can educate yourself. You know, I started out a couple of years ago, three, four years ago now. I can't remember how long it's been. And I published my first book called Ageless Health. Health is a do-it-yourself program. And that book was designed basically as a manual for you to, do whatever you needed to do, but to get it, to understand where health and wellness come from. You know, there's three primary things that you look at that answer the question, why anything happens. You talk about injury patterns that affect the nervous system. You talk about biochemistry. That's really anything that's outside the body. You know, things that you eat that you probably shouldn't be eating, things that you don't get enough of that you should be getting more of. And electrical fields in today's world, we live in a hot soup of mess of things that are bombarding us. The xenoestrogens, the pollutions, the additives, the stuff that they put in our foods and so forth. And then stress patterns, emotional stress. In our society, you know, we know that stress emotionally is way over the top. So I'm kind of segueing to something and I'm taking the time to set you up a little bit because here's what we're doing. This Wednesday evening at 11, excuse me, the 11th of, of May already. Yep, it's 11th. At 7 p.m. at the Mosaic uh, in Merrifield at the Angelica Film Center, we've rented a room. And the reason that we did that is because I'm going to be lecturing. 
Again, I don't do a whole lot of that, but my staff has been after me to do a couple presentations on different aspects. And what am I going to do it about? Stress. I know stress. I know stress intimately. You know, I fly here, I go there, I teach, I'm really in town. I'm on the road continually trying to educate doctors and people throughout the world about how they need to look at systems. You know, not just compartmentalized stuff, but systems. And so I know stress. I know stress from an injury point of view. I've had multiple injuries over the years. I know stress from an emotional point of view, having taken on volitionally, if you will, the burden of so many different things. But they're fun. It's part of my life. It's who I am. It's what I do. But even still, good stress ultimately is stress. And you have to take a deep breath of air and you have to back it off just a little bit. And then the biochemical stresses. Generally, I'm really pretty good about that. You know, I watch because I know that if I don't put the right fuel in, I'm in trouble. But everybody has their segues. And, you know, I have my little, yeah, I shouldn't have done that type of thing. And the next morning, I don't feel quite as good as I did the day before. But then it takes a week or so, and then I'm back to normal again. But that's like a nine, uh, you know, 90-10 for me. And my cheats aren't anywhere near some of what your cheats are. So here's an opportunity. Why don't you join me this Wednesday evening, the 11th, at the Angelica Fielding Center? And it's going to be an hour presentation. I'm just going to sit there. I'm going to talk to you about stress and how it affects your body. We're going to talk about stress today on the program. And so you're going to get a little bit today. You're going to get a lot more on Wednesday. And then you'll get the opportunity to ask questions. And we'll talk about all kinds of things that have to do with this phenomena, if you will, called stress that we really talk about, but we don't know anything about. You know, stress kills. And... Everybody sits there and says, yeah, it does. It kills. It kills. But do you know how it kills? Do you know why it takes you out? Do you know what happens to the body as it cascades through the process of degradation, of breaking down where your whole system begins to collapse and fail? See, when you talk about stress, you think it's just emotional stress. And what we fail to realize is that stressors, if you will, stress, comes in environmental compartments and impact and packages. It comes in the biochemistry we just talked about. It comes in how the structure is handled. We, we uh, kind of overlook that. We don't realize that our structure is being stressed all the time. And then we look at the emotional. And what I want you to realize is that whatever is running through your brain is literally what your outcome will be. Your body does not know the difference, if you will, between an injury pattern, a biochemical pattern, and something that you're thinking about. Something that you're thinking about. There was a guy that came into the office and we were his he's a sports figure and I was talking to him about how he needed to think about the game that he was playing, a professional athlete. And this one day he came in, he was a little kind of reserved and that's not his nature and really a top, top caliber player. And I said, What's up? And he says, Well I'm thinking about what I did wrong. And I said, No, 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 no. You will continue to repeat the process. If you continue to think about what you did wrong, you have to think about how to make it better. You have to perfect it. And then I began to give him some analogies. Years ago, back in the summer of 94, uh, I had the opportunity of meeting and talking with Michael Jordan, who all of us know is one of probably the most amazing athletes of all time. The guy was just over the top then and continues to be an inspiration to so many millions and millions of people. And I asked him, I said, uh, and this was about two, three o'clock in the morning, and I had just got done uh, treating this, you know, this one significant figure. And I said, Michael, I said, what makes you so great? He looked at me and says, what, Doc? He's, I said, what makes you so great? He said, do you want me to tell you what I usually say? No. I said, I know what you usually say. I, you usually say that, you know, you expect more of yourself than anybody could possibly expect of you or from you. I said, no, seriously, what, uh, what makes you so great? And he said, I ex not only expect more of myself, but all the time, no matter when, no matter where, no matter how I'm involved, I picture what I'm doing perfectly. When he, and he went on to tell me when he was in high school, he didn't make the team. You know, he didn't start. And he went out and literally every day, every day shot hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of hoops. And every time he threw the basketball, he pictured it in his mind perfectly. And pretty soon the neurology came with the vision. And so this athlete that I was treating, I told him, I said, look, you have to 
lock that in. And there's ways of, once you visualize, there's ways of locking that vision in so your neurology acts the same way every time, all the time. And as the season went on with this athlete that I was treating, and we were doing this on a weekly basis, and I showed him how to anchor it, his performance went over the top. He superseded any expectations that anybody possibly could have of him. And he continued to improve and continued to improve and continued to improve. So what I want you to understand is that emotional peace is so profound in how it affects everything and anything that we do. And sometimes we don't realize when we talk about stress, we think it's external stuff when it really sometimes has to do with how we've been trained to run our brain. But understand three stresses, structural, biochemical and emotional. There's a guy by the name of Hans Selye, and he's dead now. You know, he was known as the uh, the f uh, the father of stress, if you will, not giving it, but really understanding the impact that it, it had. He came up with this thing called uh, general adaptation syndrome, and it was basically how the body began to adapt into this fight flight pattern, and where it prepares itself. You know, this first you go into it, no matter what happens you have this alarm stage that goes on. It's like, you know, bells ringing and, and you get ready to, to fight the battle, right? That's, that's the fight flight response. You can either fight the tiger or you can run away from the tiger, but both situations require that you go into this second phase and your muscles, you know, get all kinds of blood. But you know what happens when you're always in fight flight? You're always ready to fight. You're always jumping out there and, and really going after somebody. All the blood supply goes to your muscles. Your blood pressure goes up. Your heart beats more. But that repair process, you know, to your organ systems, you know, the, the intestinal tract and the liver and, you know, all the, all the other pieces that have to have that calm moment, they never get it and you begin to break down. Your body begins to destroy itself. So you have to understand that this general adaptation syndrome that Dr. Salye came up with many, many moons ago uh, is so intimate and critical to everything that now we're saying, oh yeah, that's really true. Where years ago, medical science said, eh, this guy's lost his, his noggin. He's, you know, it's, that's really not it is. But, you know, if the duration of stress is sufficiently long enough, and as I said, where there's no shutdown and prepare, you enter a stage of exhaustion, okay? You enter a stage of exhaustion, and that's where you get the damage. That's where you get the inability to fix anything. That's where you get the chronic stuff that never, ever goes away. Wednesday night, I'm going to go through that step by step. I'm going to show you what happens. I'm going to give you things to do right there. Matter of fact, when you walk in, before we get into it, I'm going to get some things in your hands so you can relax for that hour that we're going to spend together and we're going to have some fun together and I promise you you're going to feel better you have more energy you'll be happier when you leave than when you you know so many presentations and I've done it too you know to doctors out in the field that I put them in a place of I break them I get them to understand how bad they are but what I want for you is I want you to understand how good you can be and I want to give you some tools that will take you over the top so May the 11th, this Wednesday evening, 7 p.m. at the Angelica Film Center in Merrifield. You know, what I'd like you to do, though, is I'd like you to call our office at 703-698-7117. That's 703-698-7117. And register, because I don't know what the size of the room is, but like everything else, it's limited. So love to see you this, this uh, Wednesday evening. We're going to have some fun. I promise you, we're going to talk about the stress pattern and how your body resists certain things and finally you start breaking down but more importantly what you can do to fix it what you can do to fix it isn't that really an interesting topic how you can feel good have more energy be better than you've ever been before well here's an opportunity this wednesday evening call the office 703-698-7117 we're going to come up for a break right now and when we come back we're going to talk more about stress and the different aspects don't go away this is dr tom Rosal. Welcome back, everybody. Dr. Tom Rizal here. You're listening to Dr. Tom Rizal Live. Indeed, I'm in studio. Give me a call, 888-630-9625, 888-630-9625. By the way, happy Mother's Day, everybody. In case you thought I forgot, but I didn't. I didn't. 
you know, I got up this morning and I made my wife breakfast and, you know, plotted her motherhood and her grandchildren. And, you know, she's the matriarch of our family. Talking about stress. By the way, I want to, what I want to tell you is that you know how picky I am when it comes to food. Those of you who know me know that I'm very, very picky. And I like only really good things, not things that really just taste good but are good for you as well. Well, one of my favorite places to go is a place called Rose Kebab in Vienna, Virginia. I mean, the the proprietor, Hassan, is a good friend, but this food is amazing. From eggplant to chicken to lamb to beef, you name it. There's stews, the vegetarian dishes and so forth. It's an amazing place. Go check it out. And when you go in, tell Hassan that I sent you, and guess what he'll give you? He'll give you 10% off. Go check it. Vienna, Virginia, Rose Kebab. Tell him that Tom sent you. <laughs> now, I had to do that because we're talking about stress, right? And we're talking about the stressors from structural, chemical, emotional pathways. So I have to make sure that my stress is modified on a day-to-day basis, but also that I'm getting the things that I want. I eat proteins that are dense proteins. I like lamb. I like chicken. I like those kind of things, right? But a lot of you say, well, I need to have a vegan diet. Well, if you're going to do that, there's ways of doing it specifically with, you know, different types of beans and lentils and uh, eggplants and, you know, uh, certain types of vegetables and so forth. And you can, you can make that happen. You know, if you go into the office and you talk to Sue, she'll show you, okay, you can do it this way. You can go, we're not going to fight with you. We're just going to tell you what you need. And then it's up to you to make sure that you get it done. But biochemical stresses are things that we do have control over. You know, instead of going, you know, over to the fast food, whatever place and getting fried that has all kinds of junk and, and, you know, things that have been put in it that are no good for you, you need to pick well and choose well, and then make sure that you nourish your body like you would a race car. You have to make sure that you get things that are going to support you and move you forward. Remember, we talked about the professional athlete in the last segment of the show, and I said I taught him how to ask the question, is this moving me closer to something I want and making me better than what I've been, or is it pulling me away from? See, too many of us, too many of us think that, you know, anything is okay. But, you know, would you, if your car needs 93 octane, would you go down the street and would you put junk in it? I don't think so, because what would happen to the car? It breaks down. Well, that's a stressor. Biochemical stressors are the things that are around us, so you have to adapt as best you possibly can to your environment and the things that you have control over, and your diet is something that you do, in fact, have control over. It's important that you understand that. Join me Wednesday evening, okay? We're going to talk about this stuff. We're going to take you through the structural stresses. I'm going to show you, you know, how to determine whether or not you're in trouble and what you can do about it. Shirley, thank you for calling. How can I help you? Hi, I went to Lifeline Screening, and I have significant plaque in my carotid artery. Okay. And uh, I got to make an appointment with the doctor, but I'm a little worried about this. All right, so it's, it's cause for concern. It's not cause for panic, but it's cause for concern. So what you need to find out now is that you need to find out What's causing the placking? See, placking occurs because inflammation, inflammatory reactions in the body. Then your body tries to help you out by putting in this cholesterol plaque or this calcific plaque to try to balance the inflammation. By the way, when you hear the term inflammation, think acid. And so the body's trying to help you so the acid doesn't burn through the arterial bed. And so you don't bleed on the other side. So it's kind of placking it up. And so you have to look at all the pieces. You look at the structural stresses. You look at the biochemical stresses. You look at the emotional stresses. And you have to handle all that. But the first thing that you do is you've got to do a VAP. A VAP uh, lipid test gives you the subfractions of all the cholesterols. Then you need to find out, you know, you have to take a look at your dietary patterns. You have to look at your exercise. You have to look at all those things that have influence in inflammation in the body. So without knowing more, I mean, I can't tell you, listen, Shirley, go out and do X, Y, and Z. I mean, in a general situation, you should be walking, you know, your diet should be more uh, fresh vegetables uh, than uh, anything else. Your, your protein should be, if you're eating dense proteins, they should be lean. You should be avoiding things like sugars. The more sugar, the more placking. If you're drinking sodas, they're acidic. They're going to plaque even more. You want to go alkaline. You want to get your body as alkaline as you possibly can. Uh, fatty acids are going to be extremely critical, the omega-3, 6, and 9s, and the DHAs, and so forth. And there's certain types that are going to be more significant than others. There are things that will begin to reverse placking, but you have to know what that's all about. If you have pain in your body, pain, chronic pain, is 
acidic. It's inflammation. And if you don't put that fire out and fix those things, it continues the process. So uh, what I want you to do is be concerned, but don't be over the top worried because you can fix anything. You just have to know the extensiveness of it. You have to know what those other factors are, and you can begin to reverse things. You know, many years ago, I graduated from Kent State University in Ohio, in Kent, Ohio. And they were the first ones years ago. They took people who had heart problems and and um, post-stroke, post-myocardial infarcts, and these guys were debilitated. And what they started to do, nothing more in those days than simply put them on walking regimes. And some of these people couldn't walk 100 yards. And they walked them, and then pretty soon they began to walk them faster and a little bit trotting. And what they saw in many cases was an increased vascularization, better circulation in the body, and reversal of a lot of the problems. So surely this is not something that can't be helped. Uh, you can give Sue a call at the office, 703-698-7117, make an appointment to see her. But you need a lot more data, and if you send me that, I'll help you walk through the maze. We're coming up to a break, and we're going to come back and talk more about stress and what happens to the body. This is Dr. Tom Rosell. Dr. Tom Rosell Live continues. At the Roselle Center for Healing, we care about your health and want to help you take your health in a new direction, far from drugs and surgery. Knowledge is the key to optimal wellness and control of your health. We offer free health education on chronic health conditions and natural integrative medicine treatments. Attend Neck and Shoulder Pain on Wednesday, May 18th at 7 p.m. Space is limited, so register today. Call 703-698-7117. That's 703-698-7117. Or visit rosellecare.com. Did you know that stress is linked to the six leading causes of death in the U.S.? Poor response to stress and adrenal dysfunction can prevent your body's ability to handle inflammation. Learn more about poor stress adaptation and how to balance mental and physiological stress. Join Dr. Tom Rizal, D.C. for an intensive and informative hour on stress at the Angelica Mosaic on Wednesday, May 11th at 7 p.m. For more information and to register for this free health education event, visit drtomrizal.com slash events. One. News now on 105.9 FM and AM 630 WMAL. Welcome back, everybody. Dr. Tom Rosell here. You're listening to Dr. Tom Rosell live. I'm in the studio. It's beautiful outside, and happy Mother's Day to all of you wonderful, wonderful ladies. You know, if it wasn't for you, you know, the world as we know it would be very different. You're the center of our world. You're the one that everybody goes to. You know, without mothers there wouldn't be a home because, you know, us guys, we kind of have, you know, kind of different things on our brains all the time. So we need you to keep us all together and keep our heads where they're supposed to be and, you know, slap us up alongside every once in a while when we need it. But nevertheless, seriously, all kidding aside, happy Mother's Day. Tribute to all of you. 888-630-9625. That's 888-630-9625. I'd love to talk to you. You know, if you can't get me here, what I want you to do is go to the website. Go to rosellecare.com. That's R-O-S-E-L-L-E-C-A-R-E.com, rosellecare.com. And take your time. Go through the website. There's a lot of stuff there. I mean, it's all there for you. There are videos. There are audios. There are educational pieces. Check it out. Really check it out because we've taken the time to put it together in a way that is not only informative, but it's educational. That's the whole purpose. That's the whole deal. We're talking about stress as I will continue the process and the conversation this Wednesday, the 11th, at the Angelica Film Center at the Mosaic in Merrifield, Virginia. Join us, 7 o'clock. The weather is great now. You know, it's beautiful outside, like today. It's really nice. So, you know, you can get there easily and, you know, we're going to relax a little bit. And by the way, at the Mosaic, there's some really neat restaurants. So you can go either before or you can go after. And, you know, just grab a bite to eat, walk around. It's a really cool place. But, you know, join me and let's talk about stress and the manifestations of it. And we, we see so much of it from a structural, chemical, emotional pathway and what that really means. You know, I learned something many years ago that was a springboard of Dr. Hans Selye's work, but also that was kind of the the perceptor, if you will, of everything that we know today about epigenetics and, you know, how our environment stimulates things and how we trigger things and how we can trigger things called junk DNA. Junk DNA is really dormant DNA. It's the stuff that you get passed on from your grandmother to, you know, to you, and then you give it to your children and something. Well, it's a real situation. Epigenetic phenomena are all those things that are outside of you that affect your genes and the way they express themselves. So there was this thing called neuroassociative conditioning or NAC. 
and it really came uh, came about and put together. I mean, it took a lot of stuff that was known, but put together in a very applicable way by uh, a good friend by the name of Tony Robbins. Many of you know who he is. I've known Tony since 1994 and traveled with him at one point for about seven years and uh, learned this neuroassociative response. You know that uh, the the uh, the process with the Pavlov's dog, right? So they got a dog, and then they feed the dog something, and they ring the bell at the same time, and they feed the dog, they ring the bell, they feed the dog, they ring the bell. Pretty soon they just rang the bell, and they didn't give the dog anything, but the dog acted in the same way. It triggered a response, and the dog would salivate, and his stomach would put out enzymes and all those things. It's a triggering mechanism. We do that in response to many things. So this neuroassociative conditioned response is one that uh, identifies how triggering mechanisms can make us do negative things and can make us do positive things. And we can adapt. In, in my book, Ageless Health, Health is a Do-It-Yourself Program, there's a whole section on that triggering mechanism. So if you don't have a copy of it, go get it and learn how to do this. But I'll probably go over a little bit of this on Wednesday evening too because I want you to have a handle on some of this uh, this phenomena, but neuroassociative responses can be extended to the thought process of your environmental epigenetics, your stressors emotionally, your stressors biochemically, your stressors that have to do with injury patterns and so forth. You know, when you're hurt and you're kind of limping around all the time, I mean, putting up with the pain, that pain is inflammatory. It's acid, and it will cause all kinds of problems. It causes your body to degenerate. Our caller earlier talked about placking, and that inflammatory response can be due to, that's causing her placking, can be due to structural pain or injury or imbalances within the system. It can be due to all kinds of stress patterns, emotional. Let's call and talk about it. Triple eight six three zero nine six two five. Triple eight six three zero nine six two five. So. As we talk about epigenetic patterns, we talk about re-stimulation of junk DNA. You know, the big thought process today is, you know, anything that has to do with GMO foods, genetically modified foods. So why is that so important? Because this genetic alteration of the gene of the food gets into your body and now it stimulates and alters your map, your DNA code. So now these dormant these dormant genes, these junk genes, these things that haven't bothered you that were passed on, by the way, from great-great-grandma to great-grandmother to grandma to mom to you, now all of a sudden their ugly head is starting in, you know, to rise and you get symptoms and things that are happening to you that weren't there before. So can you fix them? Can you reverse them? Can you turn them around? Can you put them away? Well, the short answer is yes, you can. 80%. 80% of all of your pass-throughs, all your predispositions, all your familial you know, genetic modifiers can be altered. They can be modified. They can be put to sleep. They can actually get to the place where they're not there anymore. Now, that's science. That's not Tom Rosell telling you that. That's science. Look it up. Study epigenetics and study junk DNA. There's a book out there called... Uh, seeds of deception, and I think I've mentioned it to you several times before. If you really want to find out how foods are modified, this is a great book, and it it tells you what happens, and then it tells you what happens to animals and research facilities. It tells you what happens when you eat the animals, and it tells you what happens when you eat this food. So go out and get yourself a copy of it, and I promise you, by the time you get through about 80 pages, you're not going to be happy. You're going to want to take somebody out. I'll tell you who my hit list is, you know, and you, you, we'll match them up and see what we can do. But, we, you know, we're, we're not going to threaten anybody, at least on the air. 888 But this epigenetic phenomena is significant because it gives us two pieces. It gives us the ability to shift and change and alter from bad to good. Just as we know that when we have good, if we mess it up, we can go from good to bad. So both doors are revolving, and you need to have the information to be able to get that done. Mary, thank you for calling. How can I help you? Uh, I, had, I wanted to know something about, the, I think it's Sjogren's syndrome. Yes, ma'am. What would you like to know? Well, I had some little problems like uh, a little bit of a runny nose, clear liquid, and different things like um, my um, sense of smell. 
has uh, diminished. Did, Mary, did somebody tell you that you have Sjogren's? No, a long time ago I had read something about it. Okay. So, and I didn't remember what, I thought it might, and a very dry, my big problem is very dry mouth and throat. I think I uh, breathe from my mouth at night because okay. I snore. Okay, all those, the things that you're talking about may or may not be associated with Sjogren's or anything else. Sjogren's is an autoimmune problem that is due to fight-flight phenomena, stress of the adrenal system, thereby then affecting things like the thymus gland. And then between the two of them, uh, things don't get filtered as well through the liver, but it's a hardening and a drying of the system and a decreased function of the fight-flight adrenal phenomena Kidneys are stressed and so forth, and it can be quite devastating. You go in, and there's very specific tests that uh, these markers will be very, very elevated. I've uh, I've treated literally, I don't know how many uh, Sjogren's patients over the years, uh, and if, like anything else, if it's identified and that's really what it is, there's a very specific way of beginning to modify. The medical approach to treating Sjogren's are steroids and all kinds of biological suppressants and so forth that don't work. Uh, they actually make the patient worse. And patient who has very advanced Sjogren's has a very shortened timeline. Uh, based on what you're telling me, you don't you, you don't have Sjogren's. You may have other things that are debilitating you. There's things that you can do to modify your condition. One of the things that you do with any kind of Sjogren's patient, particularly they have uh, dry eyes and they risk cracking the cornea not, uh, or the sclera, the, out, uh, the white of the eye and so forth, but the corneal layers, is that you have to give them very, very high levels of omega fatty acids, between, uh, especially borage and flax. And uh, it has to be done with somebody who really can direct them and knows what they're doing. Uh, the adrenal system has to be supported. Uh, their stress patterns have to be modified. If their stress patterns are not modified, you don't have a prayer to, to turn this thing around. But if they are, this is a condition that can be, in my experience, over the years of treating these people, you balance the structure, you balance the energetics, you balance the biochemistry around them, and life for them gets a whole lot better. So, Mary, I hope that helps. I hope that gives you a little direction. I don't think you have the problem. Just you know, make sure you're drinking a lot of water. And if you're drinking, th you're, you're breathing through your mouth, and that's not something that you normally do. It may be an allergy reaction. It may be a problem with the upper portion of your neck where the nerves are being irritated. So you know, you're you're not breathing through your nose the way you're supposed to. But you start with things that are are normal, and you go from there. George, my buddy, how can I help you? Thanks for calling. Hey, Dr. Tom, how are you doing today? Good. What's happening, man? Beautiful day. I have a question. I have a friend that actually lives in Dubai. He's been there for six years. Uh, been a friend for probably 25 years. He's uh, actually looking pretty good when he came back. He does uh, uh, mixed martial arts and that type of thing. 57, 58 years old. And he started taking these injectable hormone, uh, I guess, replacements for, for men. It's, right. Uh, paying like 800 bucks a month or whatever, doctor supervision. What's your thought on that? Uh, it's dangerous. So let me let me take you through it. Listen, we all go through a cycle where, you know, our testosterone level after we hit, you know, our late 20s, mid 20s and today's world begins to decrease. But it's the usable amount of testosterone and the usable amount of growth hormone that is residual in the body that actually can get in and transport into our system that is the thing that we want to um, make sure it takes place. So anytime you put anything in that's synthetic and, and you know, if he's getting injections overseas, uh, it's it, more than likely it's an, an, a synthetic human growth hormone that is allowing his system to basically, basically turn around. I'm going to give you an example. You remember Lyle Zadel many years ago, played for the Oakland Raiders? Okay, so guy died, right? He died of cancer because he was injecting all kinds of things, steroids and, and growth hormones and so forth, and it formed cancer. Um, that's the problem. It can trigger underlying genetic patterns that are there, but it also can produce things because it'll cause the system to break down and deteriorate. You want to have balance. Now, are, there's other things out there that can make a difference. There's a, there's a, a nutrient called chrysin, and chrysin uh, will help increase the transportation of your testosterone because it decreases the inflammatory wall where it's not locking into the system. Uh, there's some aromatase inhibitors out there that are natural. They're not, you know, the things that our drug, uh, drug companies like to produce. Um, Chi Laboratories out of California uh, produces some very, very good products. Uh, Myomin is one of them. Now, I'm not telling you to, to take it. I'm just telling you that is, that's an aromatase inhibitor. So if you drop the estrogen uh, so it doesn't lock into the receptor sites, and that's a problem with so many guys in today's world because everything's loaded with estrogens, that you can actually transport your 
more testosterone into the body that you're producing. You're an, you're an athlete, you're a weightlifter. So you, by default, you are producing more testosterone than more, more guys, you know, in your age group. So you're going to do that because you're creating a demand. The problem is, is that because we're not in our teens anymore, early 20s, that if we stop it, it goes way faster than it did in those days where you could take a month off, go back, and it was like you did it yesterday. Today, you get back, you, you take 10 days off, and, you know, you really got to go slow and make sure that, you know, the ligaments are pliable, the muscles are reacting properly, you're getting the right nutrient bases. But there's lots that you can do naturally to support that system. You want to make sure that your energetics, your chi, your kidney chi, which is, you know, uh, you support it with acupuncture uh, treatment and so forth, is where it needs to be. You're eating the things that you need to eat that are clean and supportive. There are nutrients out there, everything that will stimulate. Uh, there's there's uh, pro, uh, there's protein uh, uh, products that are really just amino acids that are so highly usable that they will bypass the liver and they'll bypass the kidneys, so you get about 98% nitrogen utilization. Um, so my to answer your question directly, they won't be going to my body. You know, because i got to tell you, you came back and I'm like, Every, every, if you're competitive, obviously you compare yourself to other people, not in a manner that, that's bad, but, you know, just as a, a sounding board. Really. I agree. I agree. Sounding it's board. You know, you take a look at this stuff and you say, yep, uh, where'd you do that? How'd you get it done? But you got to, you have to, to balance it out. You got to weigh it. You know, how, where's the risk? You know, if the risk is significant, it for me and the advice that I would give to anybody is that, listen, it's going to happen to somebody. It could happen to you. You know, if it's, if it's, if that cancer is going to show up, why not you? And yeah, well, I don't do odd, I don't do well with odds like that. So I think I'll I'll just I'll just look at them as a sounding board and say, hey, you're looking good, and just do what I've got to do. That's all. You're, you know, you've got a great attitude. Your energy is good. You know, just do the things that you can do to support your system. Make sure structurally you're you're well. You don't have any areas of subluxation. Make sure your energetics that you can balance your acupuncture are good. You know, just remember, you know, the old Chinese martial artists, right? That they call the treasures of China. These guys, you know, are so amazingly adept and energetic and flexible and so forth. And they're in their 80s and, you know, 90s. And half of the time, they don't even practice physically. They practice in their mind. So they enhance their neurological responses. That's what you have to do. And, you know, we're rigged genetically to live a whole lot longer than we are. And but we structurally, chemically, emotionally begin to break our system down. George. It's that, an amazing thing, and I'm happy to hear that you that you you're you're uh, help on Tony Robbins because he really is. I, I think he's a great uh, inspiration. He is. Uh, a guy's got more energy in his little finger, George, than most people will ever have. Buddy, I gotta go. Uh, talk to you soon. This Wednesday evening, the 11th, I'm going to be at the Angelica Film Center at the Mosaic in Maryfield, Virginia. We're going to be talking about stress and how you can modify that. I'm going to give you things to do right there. Matter of fact, we're going to start off by giving you something so you feel good while we're talking to you. Don't go away. We're coming up to a break. You're listening to Dr. Tom Rizal Live. 105.9 FM and AM 630 WMAL. Are you dental phobic? Do you neglect your dental health because of fear and anxiety? A beautiful smile begins with exceptional dental care, and you can trust in the expertise of Soft Touch Dental Care and Dr. Michael Chung. Soft Touch Dental Care is unlike any dentist office you'll ever experience. Their warm and welcoming environment is designed to soothe fears and anxiety the moment you arrive, and they're especially pleased to pamper their honored guest patients. Dr. Michael Chung is a professional and leading expert in all areas of comprehensive dentistry, including cosmetic, sedation, neuromuscular, TMJ, and implant dentistry. Offering state-of-the-art technology, Dr. Chung can give you the smile of your dreams. Arrange for a complimentary consultation today with Dr. Michael Chung and experience the expertise that makes Dr. Michael Chung so unique. Call 703-319-6990. That's 703-319-6990. Or visit bestinsmile.com. That's bestinsmile.com. 105.9 FM and AM 630 WMAL. Welcome back, everybody. Dr. Tom Rozelle here. You're listening to Dr. Tom Rozelle live. I've been in the studio today. It's beautiful outside. It's Mother's Day. And as a tribute to all of you, very, very happy Mother's Day. And again, if it wasn't for you, there wouldn't be us. So we want to make sure that you're taken care of today and acknowledged as you should be all the time anyway. But we want to make sure if your mom's out of the area, pick up the phone, call them, say, hey, I appreciate you. Thank you. 
you know, because at the end of the day, it was about mom. And you got to do something about that. Triple eight six three zero nine six two five. That's how you find us here every Sunday at twelve o'clock. And when you were not here, if you want to find us, you go to RoselleCare.com. Send me a note. I'll get back to you. 703-698-7117. That's how you get a hold of one of the doctors at the Roselle Center. And they'll get back to you. They'll call you. Tell them, you know, tell the staff what it's about. And uh, they'll assign it to a specific doc. Or if you have a specific doc you want to talk to, they'll call. They're really good. And, you know, sometimes if I can't get to it, I'll pass the call off to make sure that you will be talked to immediately because my life sometimes gets over the top and crazy, 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 crazy. Neurolinguistic programming, neuroassociative conditioning, epigenetics, Dr. Hans Selye. When you hear any of those terms, you're talking about how stress affects the body. And the good news is that you can turn things around. Think about this right now. Do you explode? Does somebody seem to push that button all the time and you go into a state of anger? It's like, boom, you're there. Are you depressed? You've lost your ability to want to do anything where you were really this creative, amazingly you know, productive person. Now you could give a darn about whatever. All of those are signs of stress that has gone way, way, way too long. You're hurting all the time and you can't figure out what you did it and everybody go to so there's nothing wrong with you. Think about the things that are stressors in your life, biochemical stressors, structural stressors, emotional stressors. You can reverse anything, but you've got to figure out where it's coming from. And you have to have a willingness to do something different than you're doing now. Because if you do the same old, same old over and over and over again, guess what you get? More of the same, right? You've got to change something. You've got to be willing to do something different. You know, if you sit on your duff all day long and you do nothing, then your body's going to break down. If you look for the closest parking spot, you know, rock star parking right up against the door at the mall, and you don't have a, little, a long walk, you're going to have a problem. Park at the end of the mall and walk to the door. Little rain's not going to hurt you. Is it all carbohydrates on your plate, or are you looking at tons of vegetables and lean meats? And the type of starches that you should have are, you know, things like wild rice and a little bit of sweet potato and lentils and some beans and so forth. Here's, here's an axiom when it comes to food. Here's an axiom, right? If they feed it to an animal to take it to market and slaughter it, it should not be going in your body. If they feed it to an animal because they want to beef it up and fatten it up, it shouldn't be going into your body because you'll end up with those hardening diseases. And by the way, did you know that somebody who is angry all the time and, you know, just angry and, and, and vengeful, they end up with the tumors. They end up with the cancers. That's the emotional portion of healing. There's a whole bunch of that out there. We can spend a whole day on that. How you think, how you run your brain. Remember I said your body doesn't know the difference between an actual experience and one that you think about? It's true. You will manifest whatever it is that you, your rituals, your day-to-day -day rituals are really the thing that determines your outcome. What you put in your body is important. It can't be haphazard if you don't want problems. But unfortunately, we're brainwashed. We're told that it's okay. It doesn't make a difference. I want to leave you with a thought, okay? Think about a dog. Handle every stressful situation like a dog. If you can't eat it or play with it, then pee on it and walk away from it. Having said that, this coming Wednesday evening, 11 o'clock, I'll have more of those for you, really. Uh, yep, up on the screen. This is Dr. Tom Rosell. Since opening in 2007, family-owned and operated Rose Kebab Restaurant has been proudly serving Northern Virginia the finest in Persian cuisine and delicious halal meat. Open seven days a week and conveniently located in the Vienna Shopping Center, Rose Kebab prides themselves in serving up good food and good atmosphere, winning Washingtonian's Best Bargain Award for seven continuous years. See for yourself. Visit rosekebab.com, read their stellar reviews, and like them on Facebook for updates. Mention this ad for 10% off through the month of May. Breast cancer is a major health risk to all women. It can silently grow uninterrupted for years. The Roselle Center for Healing reminds all women to conduct monthly and annual breast exams and consider a thermography scan from the thermography centers as an adjunct to your routine breast exams. Thermographic imaging can detect abnormalities years before a mammogram and it's safe and non-invasive. 
For more information, visit thermographycenters.com. Mm.